The main objective of this lab is to separate a mixture into its three components and be able to calculate the amount of each component present in the mixture. There are two equations that you need to be familiar with for this lab. The first equation is percent recovery, which is simply the sum of the mass of the three recovered components divided by the mass of mixture subject to separation, then multiplied by 100. The next equation is the percent composition of each component, which is the mass of the recovered component divided by the total mass of the mixture subject to separation, then multiplied by 100. You will also need to be familiar with two different types of filtrations, grouty filtration and suction filtration, also known as vacuum filtration. Using a ring stand and clamp, place a funnel with a long neck into the clamp and tighten it to hold it in place. Move the clamp down so that the neck of the funnel is inside the beaker. Using the larger filter paper, fold it in half, then in half again. Open it up and place it in the funnel. Again, using a ring stand and clamp, place a Buechner funnel in a flask with a sidearm in place. Obtain a vacuum trap from the cabinet and place one end on the sidearm of the flask and the other end to the vacuum. Place a smaller filter paper into the flask and turn the vacuum on. You can check to see if it is on by rolling your hand over the funnel. Before you get to lab, make sure that you are familiar with the physical and chemical properties of each component. When measuring out your mixture, make sure to tear the balance and record the mass to the nearest hundredth to ensure the correct number of sig figs when doing your calculations. You should also pre-weigh your beaker. NaCl is soluble in water, making it possible for us to use a gravity filtration to separate it from the calcium carbonate and the silicon dioxide. Be careful not to put a hole in the filter paper when filtering your solution. Make sure to pre-weigh your boiling chips before adding them to your filtrate so that you can just subtract the mass of the boiling chips as well as the mass of the beaker from the total mass later, making it easier to find the mass of your NaCl. Before placing the beaker on the hot plate, write your initials on it. When the water is almost completely gone, use tongs to remove the beaker from the hot plate. Bring the beaker over to your TA. Note that your TA should be the only person putting and taking things out of the oven. Because calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid, you will be able to dissolve it and separate it from the silicon dioxide by gravity filtration as you do with the NaCl. Once the filtration is complete, transfer the filter paper with the residue to a watch glass with your initials on it and bring it to your TA to place in the oven. Now to recover the CaCO3, which is done by adding Na2CO3 and using a suction filtration. Some patience is required during the reaction of CaCl with Na2CO3 to allow more time for the CaCO3 solid to form, which will increase the amount of CaCO3 recovered.
Using the small and filtered paper, take the mass of it so that you can easily calculate the mass of your CaCO3 later by simply subtracting it from the total mass. Make sure the vacuum is on before you begin your filtration. Once the filtration is complete, place the filtered paper with the residue on an evaporating dish with your initial on it and bring it to your TA to place in the oven. Once everything is dried, you can easily find the mass of each of your components as well as the percent recovery and the percent composition. Your components should be placed in their designated bins and all of the filtrate solutions and any HCL solution left over should be placed in the halogenated waste container.